If you would like to find out how your second or third mortgage can be removed for a fraction of its price, call 510-742-5887. Due to the uncertain economy, many people have settled their debts for a fraction of its value. It's recommended to use an experienced lawyer to deal with it. Shaw Parali is an experienced debt settlement attorney and has handled hundreds of such cases successfully. There are no upfront fees for debt settlement. Only when you win, you pay. Call Shaw Parali, attorney at law, at 510-742-5887 or visit YourDebtSettlementAttorney.com for a free assessment. This is just an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is established by this ad. The law does not guarantee success. Call 510-742-5887. The new novel, The Immigration Lawyer Asylum as something for everyone, drama and romance. The story is inspired by a true story about a man from Iraq who is a suspected terrorist and wrongfully held by the U.S. immigration. The story is centered on the immigration lawyer, Sarah, who handles the case and describes the entire immigration process to obtain his freedom. The story goes in great depth on filing immigration petitions. If you're a reader who wants to curl up with a book about immigration matters and human rights, visit Amazon.com to buy. Visit www.splgpc.com. Call 510-742-5887. Are you an H-1B visa holder? Do you have an I-140 petition approved or have an extension under AC-21 provisions? Are you on H-4 visa? If yes, we've got amazing news for you. As of May 26, 2015, you or your spouse on H-4 visa might be eligible for a work permit, aka EAD. And to apply, you need a lawyer who knows about H-4 visa issues. Lawyer Shah Parali has been at the forefront of this fight for H-4 rights and has actually helped make this dream a reality. Now, his firm is ready to help you or your spouse get their EADs. Call 510-742-5887 or visit www.splgpc.com to apply for your EAD. This is an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is created by this ad. And now, from the San Francisco Bay Area Studios, KLOK proudly presents to you the prominent attorney Shaw Perelli for the Shaw Perelli Law Show, coming at you with over 50,000 watts of power. The Shaw Perelli Law Show, where all your views matter. Hello, 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 everybody. Assalamu alaikum, Tastaka, and Namaskar to all the listeners. This is Attorney Shah Parali, and uh, we are live on here today. Today is Thursday, and I think it's uh, we are on uh, March 3rd today, and uh, we will be talking about immigration law. And I think today I have with me Franco on the board, and I wanted to say a special hi to everybody who are listening. Uh, for those who are listening also out of state, please give us... Uh, and uh, we we are going to talk about a lot of things, and uh, it is an election year. Things are getting really tough out there. We are seeing things that uh, you can't imagine. I, I was hoping I will never have to say that again, but I keep saying it every time. I'm seeing things worse and worse, and it's not getting better. And now we are in H-1B season, so it's going to really get tough out there. So be ready, especially for students. And I'm going to talk about some news. And uh, before I start, anything I say is for educational purposes only. Anything um, you should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk a little bit about about things that are happening out there. For one, it seems like the AM OMB has cleared the the, the steps for the executive OPT stem OPT is going to have a, this new OPT is going to have a 24-month uh, program, and uh, hopefully it will be it will be published by March 10, and after publication, it doesn't become law automatically. It has to also get signed, 
and hopefully if everything goes as planned before May 10 when there's a deadline for for the grant uh what um basically the the judge granted to the regular the OPT who are existing they will have hopefully the new OPT coming into play so again uh, I'm keep saying hopefully because anything can happen in between there might be a lawsuit there might be things like that so I will highly recommend that you you keep checking our web update and uh, uh, and we will be talking about this and we have a YouTube channel now just try this youtube.com sharp rally low you will see we are putting updates now on the we have a special student and for h1b so please uh, check it and also there is a rule um, uh, and there's a rule in uh, what is happening that being that is being proposed by one of the supporters of mr. Donald Trump of course the Alabama Jeff Sessions as you know Alabama has the reputation back in the days to be one of the most racist states and we have to say that it as it is and now we he, we hear the KKK is getting back power with the help basically not the support I should not say that but it, it is basically being uh, being condoned somehow even it was not really being denied and uh, this is getting really tough out there there's so much anti-immigration anti anti people of color anti minorities that it just baffles your mind right now but uh, hopefully we will see a good president coming but i don't think um, but if donald trump's coming to power well, we are looking at the major changes in the beginning he keeps he kept on saying that he will be uh, supporting h1b holders but now with the bill being introduced as you know there's a bill introduced right now in the in the um, in the Congress, where basically they're going to make it very, very hard on people on H-1B, especially employers, and uh, and um, they basically will will be will make it really hard uh, for H-1B employers to employ H-1B holders, and they will they will get rid of uh, of OPTs. This is what they've been saying, but uh, hopefully, God willing, inshallah, like we said, we are not going to have this, but. If he comes into power, that's what we're expecting, so we have to deal with that. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to open the lines. The number to the studio today is 408-912-5565, 408-912-5565. And you can call us any questions when it comes to H-1B, I-140, family petitions, citizenship, you name it. So let me take one caller. This is Sharp Rai. You're live on here. Yeah, hi, this is Ashish. Hi, Ashish. I'm filling out my... Application for citizenship and on mm-hmm. question 23, there's a question which says that uh, if you have been arrested, cited, or detained by a law enforcement officer, then you have to check this box. So, yes. my question is if you have traffic uh, tickets, like if I have a couple of traffic uh, tickets from 2013, so should I check that box? Traffic tickets are not arrest, but they are basically what we call they are they're really minor. But you have to mention it. But you are not arrested. But if you were arrested, that's a different story. For example, let's say you had a minor accident, and because of that, you have to you have to they are, they pick you up. Then you have to put yes. Otherwise, you don't put yes there. But you have to explain. Uh, you have to mention the traffic tickets, even if they say don't mention it. Okay? Yeah, because. The- Cited or cited, then you have to mention. Yeah, you have to mention the cited. All I'm saying is that you have to check that box, right? I have to check yes. I have to check yes on that box. Yeah, and then you have to explain. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Good luck to you. Let me take another caller. This is Shah Prai. You are live on here. Hello, Shah. This is NC. I have a question uh, regarding. It's related to your uh, field or not, but uh, I'm asking. Yeah. Uh, how many uh, people can live in a San Jose city single family home in three bedrooms? I have I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. These are zoning. This is really you need a real estate lawyer who does zoning uh, stuff in San Jose actually because each city has their specific. But maybe yeah, someone who can hear us right now can give the answer. But I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it's all right. Thanks. Uh, thanks no. for your show. It's a lot of informative. Oh. And I like it always uh, when I go office, I listen and uh, I try to oh. uh, tell the lo- as many people as you are helping the community. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, and thank you for calling us. And I hope I'm able to get your answer, but I don't know the answer on this one. I do, I do miss any question. But thank you for listening. Let me take another caller. This is Shapra. You're live in here. Hello. 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 Hi. Uh, this is uh, Ashok here. Hi, Ashok. Yeah. So I have a question. Uh, so my uh, H1 uh, uh, renewal is due, and uh, it will be happening in the month of uh, July. But uh, my wife is on uh, H4 EAD, and I'm planning to get her on H4. And my question is, uh, while I'm applying for uh, my renewal, H1 extension. Uh, can I submit her, uh, uh, you know, conversion or you know her H4, H4 along with the same application? And if I do it on premium, so will her application be also considered under premium or not? Okay, let me get it right. You're transferring your H1B, right? No, no, I'm not transferring. I'm doing an extension. Oh, you're filing the extension. Okay. Yeah, you need to file your wife extension together. And uh, technically, the, the H4 doesn't have a premium, but most of the time from experience where I've seen, when people file it together, when the H1 gets approved, the H4 also get approved, okay? So H4 will also be considered, yeah, even though it's, it, there's no separate premium for H4, but if I'm applying it together, so both will be considered under premium, right? It will not be considered under premium because there's no premium for H4, but... From practical terms, we have seen many times when we do premium for the H-1B extension, we have seen uh, that they process all together and they give us an, uh, uh, something which is together. So basically, within the same amount of time, you get the H-4. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck to you. So let me take another caller. This is Shah Rai. You're live in here. Hi, Shah. This is NC again. I have a question Hi. regarding uh, after getting the green card, um, like uh, you have to go to the social security office and uh, uh, change the social security uh, like you can get a new card why it is required and when we travel uh, outside <clears throat> is there any like if you don't change it is there any impact on it okay very good question first of all congratulations on your green card no you don't have to but I highly recommend you go and update it because if you look at your social security right now on the top, it will say uh, employment authorized by uh, by immigration, US, uh, something like that, DHS. But if you go and yeah. change it, they will give you a clean one. As for traveling, no, it will not be affected because the social security number stays the same. So it's good to update them, but it's not necessary. Uh, I recommend updating it just to avoid any issues down the road. Uh, for employment, but traveling it won't affect you as long as your passport is good and your green card is good. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Good luck to you, sir. Let me take another caller. This is Shah Parai. You're live in here. Hello, Mr. Shah. Good morning. This is... Good morning. This is Manish. I have okay. a question for you. Mm -hmm. I've had family visit the U.S. before uh, like as tourists and, you know, uh, the uh, like the visa stamp on their passport for some reason says B1 slash B2. I don't yes. know what does that mean when they've been oh. here. That's a good question. Okay. First of all, um, I like you asking that question because nobody has asked that, but I'm going to explain what it is. The B1 visa is a business visa, which basically allows you to come to the United States to look for prospect of business. So basically what happened, you come here, you look at or you want to invest, or you want to, to do and it's, uh, certain things like seminar, things like that, you, you can use that. Um, and the B2 visa is for, is for basically visitors, people who want to be tourists. But what happens most of the time, what they do, they combine the two visas in one, and they call it the B1, B2 visa. That means you can look for business, and you can also visit and do tour tourism. Looking for business doesn't mean to work, okay? It's not the same thing. So they combine it. Some people get only the B1. Some people get only the B2, but most people get the B1, B2. So you can use it for tur tourism. You can go visit the whole country, and you can also use it for looking for business, maybe buy something and things like that, okay? Okay. So does that mean that when they applied for B2, they were just voluntarily given B1 slash B2 and they are free to do whatever they want to do now, right now with that? They not whatever they want. It's different. Okay. All I'm saying is that they can look for prospect of business too. Prospect of business. 
prospects of business. Okay, so when they reapply for a visa, if they uh, if they ask this question on the visa application, have you applied for a for the B2 visa before? They have to say yes, right? Of course, because okay. B1, B2 is combined, so you still have the B2 in there, right? Okay, okay, yes, yes. Okay, okay. perfect. But yeah. I really appreciate your question because this is one question nobody has ever asked me in the six yeah. years. So I'm explaining that. It's good you made me explain what is a B1 and what is a B2. Thank you and Thank good you. luck to you, okay? Yeah. Thank so you. let Bye. me take another caller. This is Sharp Rai, you're having here? Well, I think I don't have more callers right now. So ladies and gentlemen, great. So we got some very, very interesting questions in different for from citizenship, H1B extension, we got also a caller who asked, and the B1, B2, I really appreciate that. I appreciate all your calls, by the way. Uh, it's very important to us to really kind of get your feedback. And right now, I just was mentioning earlier, we are in a very, very critical uh, time. Um, and uh, I will not emphasize enough on that, that everything that is happening right now has a Trump effect. I call it the Trump effect and also has... A, a, an angry anti-immigration uh, kind of blog effect and you're seeing a lot of things being pushed uh, uh, from the side of President Obama uh, an executive power because Congress has constantly refused to pass any law on immigration I mean pretty much any law except laws that actually give more hard time to 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 immigrants and he had no choice than to pass for example you could look at the prosecutorial discretion executive power the DACA, the H4ED, famous one, and now the OPT, um, you name it, most of them were passed, basically bypassing Congress. Not because he wanted to bypass Congress, because a lot of people hear that on the radio. And here I'm not defending President Obama, because I think he did a lot of mistakes too. But the truth is that they were refusing constantly, and they're still refusing. And look at what right now what is happening on the Supreme Court, where they basically... U.S. Supreme Court, where they're basically pushing him away as if he's not, he's nothing. And that has a lot to do with racism. And we know that, and they can deny it as much as they want. It gets me irritated when I hear people, yesterday I was hearing uh, on the news, someone would say, no, they are not racist. Are you kidding me? We can see it on a daily basis with the cases that, that we get from, from immigration. Some officers are writing stuff that doesn't even make sense. And nobody is counteracting them. I say nobody because even you fight them, it's just like they're legislating on their own bench there. So it, it, it's really irritating. You're seeing RFEs. You're seeing denials of cases. You're seeing students getting stuck at the airport, students getting kicked out. I'm not saying some of the schools are not doing, are doing a good job or things like that. All I'm saying is all this is happening because there is a climate of anti-immigration right now. And if we don't change that and we don't vote as immigrants who, who those who are eligible to vote and make make our voice heard we will be in oblivion and it's going to happen this time because there's no way they're going to leave us in peace i, I have to make that announcement i don't care how much people are going to get irritated i'm saying it but the truth is that we are in a time where they hate us let's let's put it simple they hate us not the the, the american people but a group of people who hate us and those people vote in mass in blog. So you need to go and vote too because the people who love us need our support. So make sure that you vote. It's very, very important. Register to vote. Make all your father, mother, everybody register to vote. It's very, very important. Let me take another caller now. This is Shapra, you're here. Uh, hi, sir. I have yes. a question regarding uh, L2 to H1. Mm -hmm. I'm planning to, I'm currently on L2. I'm planning to apply for a H1. Yes, sir. Uh, but I have a travel plans on July. So yes. can I travel it uh, when I do it through the premium change of status? Uh, can I travel or will that get considered as abandoned if I travel on July? That's a, that's another interesting question because, because I get that for people on OPT also. Okay, the the way the new H1B, you're applying under the new H1B cap, right? 2007-16-17, right? Right, right. Yeah, okay. I'm uh, currently on L2. And yes, uh, my company is sponsoring me H1 this year. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, and uh, since so I have a travel bank on July, cap. which I cannot avoid it, so yeah. that's so why I want to do, they gave me two options, either to do through the premium cost or counselor. So, I want to do through the premium cost. So, if I do it, uh, will, it okay. will it be considered abandoned if I travel it? Yeah, okay. Let me, let me explain to you how it works, because this is a question that becomes more and more frequent. For one, the way the H-1B works 
it will kick in only on October 1st if you're in the cap. That means you're filing on the April 1st cap. So what happens if you travel in between? Usually what happens technically, there's no change of status until October 1st. So if you came back on L2, they will probably send you to, to H1 uh, basically on a change of status. However, having said that, because of the confusion you travel in the middle, they will probably approve your H1B, but they will not give you uh, a change of status. They will ask you to do what we call a counselor processing, which is not really the situation, but this is something they have done in the past, and because of the fact once you leave, the status breaks. But if you get back the status of L2, you should be able to change to H1. As for premium or no premium, it doesn't make any difference in your case. Uh, being here, being out, you can file for the H-1B. So I'm telling people not to file premium right now. Until you get picked up in the lottery and you want something early, then file premium. Otherwise, it's useless. But uh, premium will not change anything. You can travel and come back. They will probably do your change of status on October 1st. You'll move to H-1 if your H-1 is picked up. Otherwise, you you will have to leave the country once your H-1 is approved and come back with a stamp of H-1. Okay? So which one is better, counselor or change of status is better? <laughs> change of status is usually better because counselor processing, I made a bunch of videos on that right now. They, you are dealing, when you're dealing with the change of status, you're dealing with only one department, which is the Department of Homeland Security. When you're dealing with uh, counselor processing, you're dealing with two departments. One is State Department and one is Department of Homeland Security. So, oh. and, and State Department, uh, Unfortunately, you know this. You you went to probably for stamping how they are. So it it it's not a good, it's not recommended to go. But if your company is good, you are doing well. You have a letter of employment and there's no problem. Then yeah, you can go without any problem. Um, yeah. But the and only the, thing the is that it's not. The was uh, suggested by my company attorney mm -hmm. uh, because uh, if I if they do a regular change of status, normally it won't. The results won't come by July. So that will get abundant so they suggested there will be no change of status by by july your lawyer is getting it wrong that's not the principle the change of status happened on october 1st because h1b doesn't kick in until october 1st yeah yeah what they say is if i do a regular change of status mm -hmm. and the petition is not at an approved state and during that time uh, if i travel my h1b is considered as abundant so they are suggesting to do a premium change of status. Yeah, so no, it doesn't, consider, it, doesn't consider, it doesn't consider as abandoned. What is considered oh. the part of change of status is considered as abandoned. The H1 is not abandoned because the H1 is still good. Uh, the, the, the cap is still good. But yeah, somehow, I think you misunderstood what they said. Let me tell you what they probably said to you. If they get approval on that existing I-94, so it will not affect your case down the road just to kick in. But um, honestly, for me personally, I don't think it's so important. But if they're telling you to do it this way, I would recommend going with the lawyer. You don't want to irritate them because it doesn't affect you anyway. Okay? Okay? Okay. okay. Good luck to you. I took some time on this because it's a question a lot of students also ask me on the OPT. And I'm going to mention that here. For people who are on OPT and you want to travel, Make sure of three things. The same rule will apply like uh, the previous caller mentioned in the H-1B, that you have to travel, come back. But OPT has a problem. If OPT, you don't have an F-1 stamp on your passport, you won't be able to come back. And if you go for stamping on the OPT, it's a 50-50 chance they will give you a stamp. And depending on the school, most of the time on OPT, they, don't, they refuse to give that stamp or they delay it so much your OPT is gone. So be very, very careful on that. Uh, if you're planning to travel. So it's better not to travel as an advice while your case is pending on H-1B just to be on the safe side because right now, the way they're acting on things, they're not really following the law. Like I said, it's more passion than law. Let me take another caller. This is Shah Prai. You're live on here. Uh, good morning, Mr. Shah. I have a question regarding the tax in, uh, taxation, like ever filing and its implication on uh, immigration. So for example, like, if I haven't like done the FBAR filing for two years and this year I do it and come out clean, which means like this declare my foreign assets, which uh, should have been filed like in the earlier years, uh, I come out clean from the IRS perspective, but then will it like be in my record and could it have any implications at a later stage of immigration like green card or naturalization? 
you mean your taxes is cleared or not cleared uh it it is going to be clear this year and i will get it cleared for the previous years as well well if it is clear you don't have any problem then no it won't affect you in the future but if there's some kind of crime you were charged and and you have punishment yeah there might be some issues but you can easily deal with it at the green card level on the h1b side again same rule if you have been charged of any kind of evading tax these are criminal and these are major felonies so that's a different story but if it is minor and you're clearing it with your accountant and the IRS then you should be fine okay okay perfect thank okay. you so much good luck to you so let me t- take another caller this is sharp rai you are live on air hi sir uh, uh, sure thank you for taking my call you're welcome uh, sir uh, i have a question regarding the social security card uh mm-hmm. so basically i had uh, i think i had misplaced the social security card and i'm not able to find it so mm-hmm. is there any like uh, recommended steps that i need to take i do have a soft copy like a scan copy of my card yeah i would recommend one thing because people store steal those and it can come back and bite you so i recommend that you go and put a uh, go to the police and make a declaration and keep uh-huh. i take that declaration go to the social security office and inform them because the problem is not what you can use because even the number you can use without the card but the problem is that if someone takes your number and start doing things based on that you might be victim of identity theft so my recommendation is to first mention uh go to the police make a report that you lost the social security or it was stolen and then the uh-huh. next step you go to the social security office with that report okay so they will issue me a new number or they no 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 no, no. nobody number? gets no you don't get issued new number the same number but they might issue you another card but they but they have to do investigation or something but at least they they are informed about it okay okay huh? thank you okay good luck to you let me take another caller this is shop rai you have any hi sir uh, i have a question for my husband uh, his yes. firm was applied in last november and uh, last week like he had a layoff in his company he was not affected though but i just wanted to check what is the implication on his form processing yeah that's a very good question depending which department he is in and if it is in the same area where the perm is being filed they will not be able to they will not get an approval they won't even be able to file it because there's one question one question on that perm which is that form 9089 which ask have you laid off anybody within the last 6 month uh if they put no they will be lying if they put yes there's a chance they will deny it but it all depends which department if, for example if they're laying off they have 3 4 departments and one department is not working they're laying off people there but she's department is doing okay you might be able to get away but usually big companies when they have layoff they don't file the perm they 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 back off So yeah it might affect it all depends on the circumstances. So if it affected like what would be the next steps uh, any suggestions? Well then they have to start over again wait 6 months and uh, and uh, and then start again because there's okay, no other so solution or have another company file. Okay okay so will the H1B extended on based on that again? Well, if it is not filed, then how are you going to get extended? Is it already filed or not filed? Okay. Yeah, is it filed or not filed? It is filed. It is filed like last November. Okay. So before the layoff happened after it was filed, right? Right, right. Layoff yeah. happened last <laughs> week itself and his okay. form was applied last November. Okay then he might be able to to be okay he, there might be no problem and if it is pending yeah you can use that for extension and if you have uh, any doubt give me a call at the office we can do a consultation because i have to look at exactly where where the case stand and i don't want you to give details on the radio the number is 510-742-5887 okay okay sure thank you good luck to you so ladies and gentlemen i don't know if i have more callers franco and um Today I have Franco on the board with me, and by the way, he's doing an excellent, excellent job. Really on time, really doing things to the point, and I'm really proud of that. Thank you so much, Franco. And uh, I have another caller. Let me take another caller. This is Shah Prai. You're live on air. Hi, Shah. This is Raj here. Um, I have a general question. If you are on H1, and uh, like if you are contracted to an end client, end client says he doesn't have 
they don't have a work for next month or so. So what would be the legal way of handling that kind of absence from the job? There's no legal way because you don't have it, you don't have it. Because the only way you will be able to get the H-1B, that's the biggest problem, especially consulting firm have because of the end client. They don't, they're not able to give anything six months in advance. So one of the thing is to have, um, I have not seen any solution really good about it. Sometimes people are lucky, they get a letter or an email saying that there will be work in the future there and we can use that based on the 2010 memo. But recently I've seen that they are just very strict on that. So last year some of them got away with that, but this year I don't think so. So basically you need to find an end client. Uh, for example, let's say you have an end client which is company A, but the, the project starts on uh, on uh, October 1st, well, then it will expire on January January 30, uh, 31st or something. They will usually give you a one-year H1B on that. And then later you can do an amendment, transfer your, 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 um, your candidate to another client. But um, there's no general solution on that. It's case by case. We have to look at it, check the master's agreement, check the purchase order, check everything. Or if you have an inside project, which is very difficult if you don't have a genuine project. So there's no real solution. You need to have that letter somehow, okay? Okay. 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 Thanks. Good luck to you. So ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if I have more callers. Let me check. Uh, yes, we have another caller. This is Sharp Rally, you're live here. Hello. Okay, so I don't have any callers right now. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a few other things now, Afanko, before I move on to the to the other callers, and hopefully we'll have Amit joining us in 10-15 minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we're going to talk about today is a little bit about debt settlement because this is something that is getting really... Now things are... I don't know what is happening really because I am getting a lot of calls of debt settlement. A lot of people are kind of worried because of the maybe the election time but maybe seeing the stock market crashing and things like that a lot of people want to get out of debt or some people want to just clear their debts so that they can buy a house because they're expecting the house market to go down uh you name it and if you need help basically kind of solving getting out of the debts we are the person to call you can call us at 510 the website to check is yourdebtsettlementattorney.com. This is a website, a blog, especially dedicated to debt settlement. What we do in debt settlement, we get rid of your debt without having to file uh, bankruptcy. Um, for example, you owe $100,000 on a credit card. We can settle it for you, and we can get rid of it. And um, lately, we have been getting a lot of litigation debt. For example, we had this person uh, who came to us, and he was in the litigation basically, and um, they were trying to to they were suing him basically for I think uh, sixty thousand dollars or something, but then he didn't really pay attention to it. He didn't defend himself, and uh, when he decided to defend himself, he hired a lawyer who charged him an hourly. At the end of the day, he ended up by owing because he lost the case. He ended up by owing almost two hundred twenty or two hundred fifty thousand dollars. And in the beginning, he came to see us, and we got a deal for around 30000 and he didn't take it because it was a little bit too much at that time, I understand. But then at the end of the day, when the case was finished, it became so much money. So we were able to settle it again, but it was not such a good deal because we didn't have a choice. At this point, we had to work with a 250000 debt instead of a 60000 So the problem is that if you sit down on those debts, especially litigation or some other debts, they will pile up penalties on you. They will pile up penalties, interest, you name it, whatever they can throw at you. Like they say, throw the kitchen sink at you. They will. Because the way debts work is it keeps piling piling up. And uh, we can help you get rid of those debts. We can do it for credit cards. We can do it for some seven mortgages because some houses are still underwater. And uh, also we can do it for, 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 for litigation debts. And check our website, yourdebtsettlementattorney.com, yourdebtsettlementattorney.com. You will have a lot of examples of the kind of cases we have done. Right now, we have reached more than 1,200, 1,300 cases, and it's coming back. It was kind of toned down for a while because of the economy was doing better, but since it's coming, unfortunately, it's coming back because uh, people are worried, and people have used a lot of credit cards during the holidays. 
we can help you if you don't want to file bankruptcy and things like that. So give us a call, 510-742-5887. And anything I'm telling you today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any question. So ladies and gentlemen, um, I know there are some callers on the line, so I'm going to ask Franco to give, give me a two minutes break, and then we will be back after those messages. And we will we will talk a little bit more. We will take the callers, and hopefully we'll have Amit joining us later. And uh, and uh, we will be don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. If you're on hold, just stay on hold, and then I will be back in a second. Thanks for a very good show. Thank you for the show and all the information that you're providing. Hi, Shah, really. Thank you so much. Hi, uh, Mr. Shah. Thanks for uh, doing this program. Hi, Shah. Thank you. Uh, hi, Shah. Thanks for picking up my call. Uh, hi, Shah. My name is Kunal. Uh, let me thank you for this wonderful show. It's been a tremendous help, actually. Mr. Shah, really. Thanks for sharing the information. Good afternoon, sir. I would like to congratulate you. It's a wonderful show and lots of people are getting benefited in different areas like immigration and settlement and all. Yeah, good afternoon. So, first of all, thank you very much for providing all this uh, useful information. Really appreciate it. I've been listening to your shows. Uh, I know I'm, I've been listening to your shows only on Monday, but I, 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 from now on I'll try to make it point, listen to it, you know, the other days also. Thank you for doing such a great show. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. That's a wonderful welcome. show. Hi, Mr. Shaw. Uh, I appreciate your talk show and uh, daily listener uh, about this and it's very informative. Yeah, hi, Shah. Uh, hi. Thank you for taking my call. Hi, uh, Rajesh. Hi, uh, thanks for taking my call and first of all, uh, thank you very much for your great service to the community. Thank so, thanks for giving up the current situation. Uh, unfortunate, so it's affecting by the good people as well uh, whose aspiration is this, this country. Uh, uh, thanks, Mr. Shah. Uh, thanks for taking my call. You're welcome, sir. Hi, this is Ravi. Thanks for taking my call, uh, Shah Prali. Hello, is this Mr. Shah Prali? Yeah, this is Shah. You're live in here? Yes, uh, good morning. Thanks for taking my call. Good, thanks. Happy holidays. <laughs> oh, thank you, and the same to you. Hi, sir. Uh, it's a great show you're doing. Thanks for uh, all your help. Uh, thanks so much. From all of us at the Shah Prali Law Group, we want to thank you, the audience, for making 2015 such a great year. We wish you a happy and prosperous year in 2016. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you very much. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. After this nice break, I had to take a break. My throat was getting dry. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk a little bit now. Uh, I think I'll take the callers, and then we'll talk a little bit more about uh, immigration. But let me take the caller. This is Shah Prai. You're live in here. Uh, hi, Shah. Good morning. Um, I have a question uh, regarding my... Um, so I did my master's here and I'm working in my OPT status and mm -hmm. my company is applying uh, my H-1B for April 2016. So mm -hmm. uh, I want to travel to in, uh, like uh, to India in May. So will I be having any issues uh, or do I have to go for stamping if I go to India? What, what are you traveling on right now? You're in OPT? Yes, I'm in OPT. And you are you? How did you get your OPT? You did a change of status to F1 here. Uh, yes. Uh, I did my F. Uh, I did my masters, so I applied for OPT. So I okay. got my OPT ID card. Uh, -huh. but you didn't. And you didn't get a stamp of F1. You didn't come out and stamp and file. Do you have a stamp of F1 on your passport? Yes, I. Uh, I came through my F1 visa stamped in India. Okay, so your stamp is still good, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, as long as your stamp is still good and you have a letter of employment for the OPT, you should be fine to come back. And depending on the school, of course, I cannot guarantee because you see what's happening at the airport right now. But if you don't have a stamp on your passport, don't leave because they probably will not give you a stamp, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, if, I, if my H-1B is applied in April, still I would not be having any issues, right, because it will be in the process. Uh, which issues you're talking about on the H1 or issues on the OPT? Uh, so while coming back, so since my H1B is in process and, and I'm on F1 OPT status, so does this both conflict or will I be having any issues regarding that? Technically, it should, not have, it should not have any issues because as long as you can enter properly. 
But it will have an issue if you're not able to enter. Then you will have to wait for the H1 to be approved. Then you have to do a counselor processing. My recommendation is not to do anything until until we, you you get the H1B. But if you have to travel, it should not affect the application of the H1B. Uh, but it will it might affect your change of status if you're blocked at the airport. They don't let you in. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sir. Good luck to you. So let me take another caller. This is Sharp Ray. You're live in here. Hello. Okay, I don't think I have more callers right now, and I'm not going to be able to take more callers because I have to talk about some very important points today, ladies and gentlemen. And um, for those who want to to talk to me, want to do a consultation, feel free to call us 510-742-5887. As you know, it's an H-1B time, and I think I have Amit on the line, but I will take Amit, just uh, bear with me a little bit. Uh, I will I will let you um, I will have you on the on the end few minutes. I just wanted to discuss some important points that are happening right now. For one big advice, I'm not advising anybody to travel for stamping right now. If one the company you are working with doesn't have a good contract for you, two you have any kind of of criminal uh, background on your case, okay. Uh, especially if you have DUI, I have a video specifically on that. And three, if you are on an OPT, you don't have a stamp on your passport, I don't recommend you to travel. Four, for those who are doing a change of status from OPT, F1 to H1 or H4 to H1, don't travel in the middle. Even though you are allowed to, I don't recommend you from doing it because right now there's a lot of things. They're really trying to find small things and getting people denied. We are seeing it a lot. Uh, we're seeing it on, on specialty occupations because whenever you come at the airport, they are kind of reassessing the whole thing on you. So you need to be careful on that. I know you want to travel, but you have to sacrifice one for the other. However, if you have to travel, yes, you do travel. Talk to your lawyer. Give us a call. Let us assess your case before you travel because each case is different. So you, ca- I might tell you not to travel, but you might be able to travel without any problem. So. The only way I can assess your case is look at all your documents because there are many, many issues that are coming into play. For example, I have someone who was traveling, coming back, and because he used CPT too much, they gave him a hard time at the airport. I have, And he was an H-1B. And I have another person who was also coming um, back because he wanted to change something in terms of his, his property. They gave him a hard time. So all those stuff used not to be a problem because they had no issues with them. But now it seems they're making basically a problem out of anything. And uh, this is really kind of scary because there's no real standard for us to hold on to. So I recommend people to make sure that before they travel, that they pretty much check with the lawyer. You can call us 510 and actually, I have a client, unfortunately, had I advised him, I would have said the same thing like his lawyer did. You are safe, you can go, you have a DUI, and you can come back. Guess what? They went inside the DUI and dig into it and deny him for, for health reasons, which is one of the seg- another section of the law. So, And plus, we saw so many students getting refused entry at the, air- at the airport here, blaming basically the school, which... I, maybe or maybe not, but it's happening also for H-1Bs. People are going for stamping I-82-1G need to do 1G are hitting their head. And by the time they clear the I-82-1G, need to do 1G, that person is losing their job. They cannot come back here. So don't travel. I will recommend if you don't travel, if you don't have to travel, and especially if you're in a, in a situation where you have a little bit of issues on the case, difficulties, don't travel unless you have to. After the elections, it will be a different ball game. Right now, before the elections, a big thing is happening. And I call it, like I said earlier, the Trump effect. It is having an effect on everybody, including the, the, the Obama administration. So it, ha- it is having a chilling effect. People are scared. People are scared of, 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 of retaliation. They are scared of an angry mob. Look what's ha- happening in Anaheim, where the, the, the white supremacist KKK was protesting. And things like that. So you name it, it's happening all over the place right now. So be careful. And I'm not advising here to, to scare people, don't travel. Hey, you can travel. There's no problem. But make sure you have all the 
the ammunition to be able to combat. Otherwise, they can hurt you. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to hopefully have a meet now. I'm going, uh, as I said, we can help you on debt settlement, and also we can help you on immigration. H1B is open. If you are a company, you need our help. We will be glad to take care of your case. We are we are going to accept cases probably the next 10 days because we are already kind of jammed up right now. But we will try our best to serve you. We're still taking cases though. So give us a call, 510-742-5887. I thank you, Franco, for being on the board with me today. And anything I told you today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. And uh, Amit, are you there? Uh, hi, Shai. Yes, I'm here. Hi, Amit. Uh, go ahead. Well, um, and uh, have a good weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Amit, I'll let you continue. You have nine minutes to go. Thank okay. you, Franco. Bye-bye. I'll be back on Monday from noon to one. Bye-bye. Great, thank you, Shah, and Sasrik uh, Aladam Namaste to all the listeners. Uh, hope you're having a good day, uh, getting ready for the weekend to start uh, looking at some houses as uh, the real estate market actually is a little bit, uh, you know, getting uh, crazy. Uh, the rates are climbing a little bit up, slowly by slowly. Uh, the numbers are coming out pretty strong for the California. So based on that, we are expecting, uh, you know, the rates probably going to be a little bit high, but not much is still affordable. Uh, this is a perfect time uh, uh, to uh, you know buy the house and uh, get your dream home that you're looking for. Otherwise, you know we are here to help you out. If you have any in the pre-qualification, uh, you know on the process, JW process, we will tell you. We will give you all the details. Get what you want. Get the money. We will give you a brief JW information on the so that you can set up your file ahead of time before you start searching your uh, house that you're looking for. Then let me give you my uh, contact details. Uh, number is uh, 510-299-9361. Uh, we are located in Fremont and, uh, you know, our firm, Epic Brokers, uh, we actually do everything, uh, uh, you know, in our in-house, which is from uh, property management, from loans, from buying, selling, investment, and also, you know, taking care of any of your, I mean, hardship that you have, hardship, we can definitely help you out because we have investors in-house. Uh, they are looking to help you out and get you the money faster. I got a, you know, you are in need of uh, cash uh, that you want to get the cash within three days to five days. So we are a one-stop shop and one in-house uh, company that uh, we take care of all the needs for you. And we take care of all over the California. It's not one county. We do it in all over the county. So you can call us for any county that you have any property in. We can definitely help you out in California. Number again is uh, 510-299-9361. And uh, my website is gambheeramit.com. Once again, it's www.gambheeramit.com. I am actually talking about selling, uh, you know, if you are planning to sell your house, uh, why you should uh, consider this market if you think about it. The reason actually as well as uh, this is a perfect time is because interest rate as well as coffee cut hai gane, te uh, in inventory level jadi hai gane, it is not too much right now you know there are probably dust to bar up uh, like in every cities right now that you're planning to uh, sell the property so not too much inventory other than key on the hagar ke agar to see makan waste the hagar to no jada exposure mil the hagar the jada vi price to see they the payo based on the condition of the uh, makan de bare de which you can definitely negotiate the best price on that. Uh, we'll give you the best, uh, you know, comparison uh, to understand you, you know, where your uh, property stands based on the square feet of the house and how much, you know, it should be costing in this market and what you can do to enhance that uh, property. You know, so if you are planning to sell it, this is the perfect, perfect uh, JD, uh, market idea. Like, let's say Newark. Right now, there aren't too many houses in Newark as well because uh, you can see only 10 or uh, 15 houses are only available in Newark. Uh, based on your needs, you need to have more options if you are looking for a uh, you know, best price on that one. The Agarth one who actually jada exposure chai the hai and you want people uh, to look at your you know, property online everywhere, even you know on the radio, we announce uh, your listing on the radio as well. So it goes all over the place, which get more exposure. They would not interest uh, coffee generate on the Hega and then definitely you get the price you're looking for. If you are interested in something like that, give me a call. Like I said, we can have help you out. Number Hega 510-299-9361. On top of that, if you have any property in Stockton, de vich, de vich, since you know, uh, those two cities have been uh, uh, filed the bankruptcy, 
ਦਿਸ ਈਅਰ ਐਂਡ ਲਾਸਟ ਈਅਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਆ ਮੈਂ ਆਲਰੇਡੀ ਉਸ ਏਰੀਆ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਾਫੀ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਰਟੀ ਆਪਣਾ ਵੇਚੀ ਹੋਈਆਂ ਹੈਗੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਹੈਵ ਬੀਨ ਸੋਲਡ ਫੋਰ ਓਵਰ ਦਾ ਆਸਕਿੰਗ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਸ ਵਿਚ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਫਿਟ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਵੇਚੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਲਿਸਟਿੰਗ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਇਨ ਦੋਸ ਏਰੀਆਸ ਡੋਨਟ ਬੀ ਸਕੇਅਰਡ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਯੂ نو ਵੀ نو ਹਾਊ ਟੂ ਮਾਰਕੀਟ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਪਰਟੀ ਐਂਡ ਹਾਊ ਟੂ ਗੈਟ ਦਾ ਬਾਇਰਸ ਅਟੈਂਸ਼ਨ ਐਂਡ ਹਾਊ ਟੂ ਮੇਕ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਹੈਪਨ ਫੋਰ ਯੂ so uh, so that's the thing and the other hand is that you know we have different uh, packages again as are called sellers they was they agar to know you know i mean uh, don't want to pay too much commission uh, we can definitely give you that the, the discounted uh, packet that we have or if you want to get you know property enhanced and do all the flyer distribution marketing jada bhi hega we have the premium packages on that one too that we can definitely help you out so these are some of the option that uh, see to what you help us with the real estate which when you're planning to sell the market uh, sell the property in this market so give me a call number again is 510 299 consultation is sari free hai and there is no fee for consultation you can just call and ask the, for the value we can give you the best value that is possible and then we can enhance it based on that sare kol kuch listing hai again as well available hai if you're planning to buy the house we have a listing in san jose it's in blossom valley hill uh this one is a uh, four bedroom uh two baths or three bedroom three bath and it's a seven uh, 1500 living area uh close to 8 800 lot size very close to school and uh, the price we are going to be listing this one is at 765000 dollars uh very nice location very close to uh the museum for children and the school is pretty good and the neighborhood is very quiet as well So if you're looking for something in Santa Clara County this is the perfect house that you can look for. Then we have a listing in Mountain House which is a, a four bedroom three bath three car garage. This one is a 2004 build and uh, the listed price on that is $575,000. The property is vacant and if you are planning to look at it let me know that we can definitely help you out right now. Uh, then we have a townhouse in Union City which is a four bedroom three bath 1400 living area close to 88 880 and 92 freeway. and this one actually uh, we are looking for the list price is at $475,000 uh then we have a property in Elk Grove which is a three bedroom two bath 10 out of 10 school district 2003 built 1700 living area 6500 lot size for $335,000 so these are some amazing deals give me a call if you need any help in real estate number is 5102999361 on top of that agar tumhare kol koi bhi problem hai kiya you want to you know uh secure your debt and you don't want to pay too much money to the uh you know IRS or anything like that and the, or the credit card otherwise you can contact kar sakte ho mr shah prali the team no they have definitely helped lot of people out because you know i mean the, the lot of people were in, in uh, deep debt and uh, because of that actually even, even with the second loan on the houses they are still helping lot of people out and they can definitely save you a lot of money instead of paying you know uh keep uh, i mean uh, messing up your credits as well so for that to see on no contact kar sakte hai unna number hai 5107425887 unna de bhi koi fees upfront nahi hundi only if the work is done tadi oth wale paise charge karde hai gane same thing with the real estate we don't charge anything upfront with you so for that like i said we are a team we want to help you we want to save you money our motive is to save you money that's why we are actually on the radio to help you out in anything that has to do with the debt settlement or the real estate so for real estate number is 510 2999361 and then we have uh, for the uh, Shaparali team number like 5107425887 we have lot of listings available right now about 15 those are getting ready in the market but the one i told you is already in the market they are going to see plan kar de be property sell karne waste we also have one listing in pleasant and just came in which is in close to ruby hills 10 out of 10 school district five bedroom five and a half bath this one is going to be listed for 2.1 million dollars they agar soz de pe give us a call we can definitely help you on that okay thank you have a nice day are you an h1b visa holder do you have an i140 petition approved or have an extension under ac21 provisions are you on h4 visa if yes we've got amazing news for you As of May 26, 2015, you or your spouse on H4 visa might be eligible for a work permit, aka EAD. And to apply, you need a lawyer who knows about H4 visa issues. Lawyer Shah Parali has been at the forefront of this fight for H4 rights and has actually helped make this dream a reality. Now, his firm is ready to help you or your spouse get their EADs. Call 510 
5887 or visit www.splgpc.com to apply for your EAD. This is an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is created by this ad.